Finally, an issue that both the left and right can come together on. Epstein didn't kill himself. I'm Danielle Metz. I'm Robert Vaughn. And this is The Danielle Metz Show. Quote, I never attribute to malevolence what I can attribute to stupidity. Ben Shapiro is so fond of saying. Well, Mr. Shapiro, I'll take your stupidity and raise you an Occam's razor in the proponents of evidence. The case regarding the death of Jeffrey Epstein is so absurd in the amount of coincidences and mistakes that would have had to come together at just the right order at just the right time that you wouldn't accept it in a plot in a B-movie. Everyone knows the story by now, so I won't bother to rehash the details of the event, but there have been some new revelations since the story first broke. For example, Dr. Michael Baden, a former chief medical examiner for the state of New York and who had sat in on the autopsy, made a public statement on Fox and Friends saying that Epstein's death looked more like a strangulation than a suicide due to the broken bones in his neck and eyeball hemorrhages. Then A.B. Robach, a news anchor for ABC, was caught on a hot mic incident released by Project Veritas, complaining that she had been forced by higher-ups and the royal family to sit on the story for three years. She also expressed the opinion that, do I think he was killed? 100%. Yes, I do. And the Associated Press recently reported that the federal prosecutors had offered a plea deal in regards to the charge of falsifying records to the two correctional officers responsible for guarding Epstein on that fateful night. And the officers declined. And, of course, the mainstream media turns a blind eye to all these bizarre contradictions and inconsistencies because their job is not to investigate but to regurgitate the official story. And anyone who dares to question the narrative is dismissed as a conspiracy nut. So, Robert, there's just so much to unpack here. I just can't get my head around it. What do you make of it all? It's, uh, it is a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. And I think it's interesting, being where we are, to recognize how difficult it is for justice to work itself out, especially in the United States, and how inept and corrupt and inefficient the whole system is, especially down there, when it takes absolutely years and years for anything to happen. And this is a matter of justice. So when you have the official statement by uh, Barbara Sampson, the chief medical examiner for New York, saying that Basically, it's definitely a suicide, or it's certainly in the manner of suicide. And then uh, somebody like uh, Michael, what's his name? Uh, Baden? Baden. Yeah, Michael Baden, um, saying the contrary, uh, based on physical evidence, the uh, hyoid bone being mm -hmm. broken much more often in homicide than it is in strangulation, uh, strangulation by suicide, then I think that what we're seeing is just another example of not being able to trust the people in power to do uh, do right by the people. And not to, to trust justice. the media. That's the scariest part about all this. The media is supposed to, if, if Trump had even sneezed the wrong way, they'd be all over it and they'd be investigating what Kleenex he used. But because this is a, there's a lot of people in power who do not want this to come out, they just turn a blind eye and go, yep, yeah, nothing to see here. He was obviously, it was just a suicide. There's, you know, guards falling asleep at the same time. The cameras malfunctioned. That just happens, you know. What can you do? It's almost too silly for a movie. Yeah, it's exactly. It's almost too unbelievable for a movie because nobody, if you put this on film out of Hollywood, uh, nobody would believe it. It's just like, nope. come on, it's so blatantly obvious that he the was murdered. The suspension of disbelief would be completely blown. Yeah, just go, just to go through some of the bullet points, of course, uh, some sort of attempt was already made on his life three weeks before his actual death because of the bruises mm -hmm. they found on his, necks, on his neck. Um, as you say, guards were, um, this, uh, policy was changed. Um, he was supposed to be under 30 minute uh, suicide watch. They didn't do that because they supposedly fell asleep for three hours. Yep. Uh, both guards. Um, synchronized the, napping. The synchronized <laughs> napping. Both cameras that were uh, filming him uh, malfunctioned at the same time. Yep, that's, uh, no, that's normal. That's that that kind normal. of stuff wouldn't fly with a 
with the public today in in the cinema. So and the only uh, the only bed sheet he used a bed sheet which was made of paper to hang himself, and there's nowhere to hang himself from. He basically had to tie it around his neck, forming a noose with a piece of paper, and then lean forward on his knees in order to use his body weight to cut off his airflow. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't care. Your body, at some point, no matter how determined you are, will reject your dis decision at that yeah. point. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, it. I think Michael Baden said that the, um, the bone injuries and neck injuries were not consistent with leaning forward. Oh, wasn't so, it? so that, that narrative doesn't even work. Yeah, and then of course you have the ABC sitting on the Jeffrey Epstein story uh, for fear of reprisals from the royal family, what reprisals they would have over a, a foreign media outlet, I don't know, maybe just because they won't be able to Prince, interview Prince Andrew in the future, yes. you know. Or Kate and Will, and you know. And that doesn't fly either, because uh, simply interviewing a couple of royals, you know, what, eighth in line to the throne is, is, is Andrew. <laughs> so not being yeah. able to in interview this guy, it was going to stop ABC from publishing a major, major story um, against people like the Clintons and Epstein and all the people that he was blackmailing. And that the worst doesn't part fly. about that sitting on it is she knew it, she had everything, and she herself sat on it. Yeah. Well, what happened in the intervening three years while you were sitting on it, Amy? Do you think Epstein just went into hibernation and didn't do anything? It's just because you're mad because you didn't get the scoop? Well, right. I why? She, why? If she had credible evidence, why she didn't go to the police to prevent any or, further raids? Yeah, go to the police or go to even a rival network if you're worried about your career and you want to make a big name for yourself. But I, under, I understand now that they may be um, uh, the Justice Department <laughs> of the United States may be investigating ABC now on why they sat on that story and and perhaps there may have been some crimes or a crime uh, committed by them not publishing uh, possible credible evidence of crimes. But the whole thing just flies in the face of logic and reason and common sense, so much so that you just have to put it in that pile, that ever-growing pile of things that you just can't trust people on anymore, be it the press or the Justice Department, you know, any official, just look at, and then you start looking at all the circumstances surrounding for example, uh, the chief medical officer, Barbara Sampson, now this is not to discredit her qualifications at all, but I'm just saying that it's rather circumstantial that here's Jeffrey Epstein finally caught, um, I mean he was caught before and, and imprisoned, but now he's caught again. He videotaped everybody at his private island to hold yep. a blackmail over them, including the Clintons. Um, Prince and Andrew. all of a sudden, you have um, this guy ready to spill the beans on the Clintons. And Barbara Sampson was, of course, appointed by Bill de Blasio, who was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, yep. who worked under uh, Bill Clinton's administration in uh, housing and urban development. So just connect the dots. Here is de Blasio appointing a chief medical examiner, mind you, five years before this incident. However, um, you know, he's feathering his nest by appointing people he can trust, right? I mean, if you're a Democrat, uh, if you're a Democrat and a politician, who do you appoint to high positions of power, authority, if not fellow Democrats or, or people that can be manipulated or controlled or trusted? Or trusted, yep. To go your way in a controversial issue. For example, it wouldn't be beyond the realm of a Hollywood movie to say that the governor of New York or um, the mayor or chief of police or whatever goes to a chief medical examiner and say, you know, we just rather you would make this a suicide rather than a murder. Can you do that for us? Huh? Remember that we put you in power. That's not beyond the realm of credibility or possibility. Well, and even, you can even massage it better that you so listen. You know, everybody's really tense like right now. How about instead of inflaming, you know, stuff, let's just make it easier on the public and the, you know, let's just make it a suicide because, you know, we don't really want to, fo uh, dispo uh, what's the word I'm looking for, spoke the fires and make people upset. So let's just, you know, move along. Move along, yeah. And then you have all of the circumstantial uh, 
evidence surrounding the, how many, how, how big is the death count now against the Clintons? <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, I don't think I have 40s? that many friends. I don't think, I, you know, I have that many friends, let alone them having that many friends and acquaintances dying of murder or suicide or, or suicide. disappearing and, yes, yeah, suicide, uh, than the Clintons do. So, but you just have to shrug and sigh and, and somehow the swamp has to be drained. But unfortunately, it's not going to happen. The, as we mentioned on previous shows, the, the, the atmosphere and the culture of the world today is one of what can I get out of the system versus truth, honesty, justice, yep. uh, character, integrity, honesty. Those, those values don't matter and those personality traits don't matter anymore to the population at large. Add to that, of course, the corruption of the electoral system, especially in the United States, which so much fraud going on. And um, then you have yourself a, an environment, a perfect storm, if you will, of corruption and mistrust. And what happens when the entire you know, uh, institutions around you can no longer be trusted? You're on your own. You're on your own. We're in, a, we're in an anar um, anarchy right now because there is no government. It is a, it is a cesspool run by thugs. And this is probably just one of those examples. Now, at the, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that there is still a chance, albeit small, that he did commit suicide. And that's what they're hoping, is that... that yeah, they're meant. hoping he'll just... Also, they're hoping it'll just go away. They're just hoping... You know, the news cycle is so quick now. There's always... Well, Trump's being impeached, so we're not paying attention to the impeachment trials. Then something else will happen. We'll be paying attention to that. Which is why... I'm so happy about the meme of Epstein did not commit suicide or did not kill himself has made the rounds and everybody say because it keeps it fresh in everybody's memory like there's that one picture of somebody organizing Christmas stockings at like a Target in the States and he put uh, the letters spelled out because they're initialized there's the um, can't remember his name the Republican senators tweeting out while he was watching the impeachment hearings and if you follow it the Daily Wire was the one that caught this the first letter of each tweet spelled out Epstein didn't kill himself. I so think the like... best one, the best one, Danielle, is uh, I think it was YouTube or Twitter, or whatever. There was a video, and I I, uh, I fell victim to this clickbait by um, the, the caption of the video was "Final moments of pilot, yes, um, you know, um, whose engine failed, plummeting to his death, and uh, talking to his wife." And so you click on it out of morbid curiosity. Yeah like we all do and of course he's there and he sh it shows his single engine plane with the engine shut off and uh, ha being a pilot I know that yeah you could do that and still fly safely and glide and then you start it up again and go again but uh, I wouldn't shut the engine up personally but the guy's got guts but at the end of it of course and Epstein didn't kill himself <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is well what done. this is the, the grassroots um, like I said this is a united both the left and right there's I don't think there's anybody outside of the official media and obviously based on Amy Robach's uh, hot mic confession nobody really believes he committed suicide but the me mainstream media has to pretend to protect the narrative but no one believes it and the fact that everybody's coming together with these memes and the cute little uh, ways of displaying it keeps it in the public consciousness and I hope they do that because they really want to sweep this under the rug and they're just going to keep yeah. hammering home he committed suicide he committed suicide he committed suicide and like people haven't they, uh, have you heard about them going to his his island and doing anything there you don't hear anything about that it's all just kind of going away and they just hope we stop paying attention and, and it with won't people happen. talking about it, that's important it won't happen and the history is replete with examples the most notable of course being the uh, the death of john f kennedy and again not very credible and the evidence points to a second gunman no matter how you look at it and because people knew that they had a commission, what we would call a royal commission here in Canada, it's the Warren Commission, right? There. The Warren Commission down there, but uh, basically sweeping it under a rug. And yes, as much as people want to talk about it, it never goes away. As much as Hollywood uh, uh, makes movies about the fact that he was not a lone gunman, um, as long as these things happen doesn't matter 
doesn't matter. The truth will not come out. And, and that's just probably going to be the same case with this file in that you and I can talk about it. They may make a movie about it if Hollywood ever gets off its uh, leftist butt and tries to do something decent for a change. <laughs> but it won't matter. It will no. not matter. As long as the chief medical examiner said this is not a murder, it will not be investigated. It can't be. Under what sort of credible authority could you investigate this as a murder if it's been officially labeled as a suicide? Yep. You can't do it. So we're left with that. We're left with this Hillary Clinton um, lackey, de Blasio, appointing this chief medical officer who sides, unfortunately, with uh, a, a decision that is much in favor of the Clintons because they'd be the first to lose if this ever went to trial as a, if, De if Epstein was ever allowed to live. As a matter of fact, isn't it funny? You go back to Twitter or Facebook uh, when Epstein was put in prison. What was everybody saying back then? How long till he gets Clinton? <laughs> exactly. He's dead. He's yeah. dead. And sure yeah. enough, three weeks later or whatever it was, he's dead. And nobody yeah, no just, one was surprised. No, no one was surprised. And that, that, that's actually kind of sad, but it's kind of good in the sense that people are aware that there is corruption and they know, they know the game. But what's sad about it is that this is what we're living with. This is the reality. Yeah. And it's really hard to, I don't know how you fight your way out of it because the elites have established themselves so protected and by the media, which is, uh, never mind armies, never mind police, never mind, the media is their first guard. And as long as the media keeps pounding these narratives, then they're untouchable. Yes, and I, I'm just waiting to see when we post this video on YouTube whether or not YouTube will, one, Monetize allow it, it. <laughs> two, allow it to be monetized. Just because uh, during this conversation I said Epstein didn't kill himself, or you said it, or whatever, I they'll... Didn't. they'll They'll parse that out of their artificial intelligence and say, okay, somebody said Epstein didn't kill himself. This isn't monetized. <laughs> so we'll wouldn't see. Wouldn't surprise me. Well, I don't forget the whistleblower is the big one right now that's about the impeachment trial. If you I could pronounce his name, I'd say it right now. If I could pronounce it, I'd say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's Eric something, Carmela yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they get, like I've got so many people got their streams yanked for that. Just even saying it, or actually yes. didn't even say it, just said a variation on it. So this yes. is the control of the media. This is what I mean, is yes. if they want to suppress something, and with the big tech firms now, you figure we get the message out via the internet, but the internet firms are the ones that are also now throttling the feed and making sure these messages don't get out. And that's just another thing. Maybe we should have a show on this at some point in time, because it won't go away in the next 50 years, and that is this yeah. so-called whistleblower. And I'm actually skewing the results of my experiment to see if this is going to be taken down or not monetized by saying the word whistleblower. But the fact is that... In flute, my blower, opinion, flute blower, flute <laughs> blower. In my opinion, he's not a whistleblower. He's an accuser. No. And as such, he should be outed and testify so a, per a person who's being accused of something can face their accuser. But yep. by calling him a whistleblower... All of a sudden now he's protected and that's why you're seeing Alphabet going out there and expunging anything that might reveal his identity. But he's not identity. protected. The only thing under U.S. law he's protected by is um, he cannot face any r ramifications from his employer or that kind of stuff. But his name is allowed to be known. That is not a problem. And the fact that people are reporting on information that's already available to the public are being censored by repeating information that's already available to the public is ridiculous. Like when uh, Don Trump Jr. went on The View and they're like, how dare you r r tweet out that guy's name? And he's like, I didn't even tweet out his name. I tweeted out a link to an article that published his name. And they said, well, you, you have to protect him. And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. But the, it's, again, the media protecting the narrative. And that's always the way it's going to be. And that's what we have to fight against. I think if you visualize how to defeat an enemy, the enemy being, well, let's say it's a corrupt king in a castle, surrounded by guards, surrounded by army, at the very edge of all of this concentric circles of defense for this corrupt king is the media. They're out there pushing back the hordes who want to have his head on a pike. 
-hmm. And it's the media, I think, who are our first target in this war on truth and, and war for truth and justice. Well, and that's why we're here, coming to you on a regular basis. So, until we speak again next time, have seen him kill himself, and cheers. If you've enjoyed this presentation, visit justrightmedia.org for more programming that's not right-wing, it's just right. Thank you.